I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. Hollywood's writers have solidified their deal with the studios. 99% of voting members of the Writers Guild of America approved a ratified contract with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The three-year deal includes meaningful gains and protections for writers. Union members walked off the job last May. The strike lasted 148 days. Members of SAG-AFTRA, though, remain on strike. The union representing performers began its walkout in July. The Writers Guild says it stands in solidarity with SAG-AFTRA. Fans of The Crown are preparing for the sixth and final season of a show that has given us a glimpse into royal life. The final season will premiere in two parts. Part one will focus on Princess Diana's relationship with Dodi Fayed and their tragic death. Part two will explore Prince William's life after Diana's death, the Queen's Golden Jubilee, and the future of the monarchy. The cast includes Elizabeth Debicki, Dominic West, Imelda Staunton, and Jonathan Price. The award-winning series made its debut on Netflix in 2016. Part one premieres on November 16th and part two on December 14th. The Killers of the Flower Moon made its premiere at the BFI London Film Festival. It's a gripping and tragic story of attacks on indigenous people, all in the name of power and greed. The film's actors did not participate due to the actor's strike, but the film's director, Martin Scorsese, and some of the other creators did walk the red carpet. Well, I'm disappointed that we don't have the actors. Um, it's a good time for them to be here and to um, enjoy even, even if it's just a moment of, uh, of uh, getting a picture taken together and you know everything they went through. The, it's been a very special film for me, especially over the years, trying to get it, uh, uh, get it to um, uh, be in a shape that is a story I wanted to tell. You know, along with Leo and Lily Gladstone and De Niro and Jesse Plemons and all the Osage with us on this picture. The Killers of the Flower Moon was going to be very challenging and very exciting and a very important story to tell. So I was excited and nervous and called Renee as soon as I know we would be moving forward with the project for her expertise and knowledge of the indigenous community. It's, it's, it's really the only way I know how to do it. We first start with the incredible research that Marty and Marianne did with the Osage people and that outreach that they had already established and we just built on that and we first went to the Osage community and we saw everyone who was interested in actually being part of the film. I want people to realize that this is a true story and I also want people to realize that the forces that made this happen could result in, in the bad acts that you see in the movie, but it could happen to anyone if you're not ready to admit uh, how the world works. We were not prepared, uh, and that shows. But now, uh, even though we've lost all that wealth, uh, we uh, are still here as a people, and we're still uh, expressing ourselves, well, as this movie shows. Killers of the Flower Moon hits theaters on October 20th. It's been 25 years since the murder of Matthew Shepard, a gay man in Wyoming. We're honoring his legacy as a change maker for the queer community. A new special from IDTV is taking a closer look at Shepard's life with his closest friends and allies. I wonder when there were discussions about creating this documentary about uh, Matthew's murder and, you know, some of the aftermath and, you know, good things like the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd hate crime legislation that uh, President Obama passed. Uh, would you talk about some of the elements that you wanted to be sure that you included in this piece? Yes. When we decided to green light this documentary, we knew it had to achieve multiple things. One, it had to honor the life this young man led. Mm -hmm. um, he was an incredible young adult with so much ahead of him, and we wanted to showcase that. We also wanted to have a frank look at the hate that was allowed to exist around him in his community. Mm -hmm. in, in part, when we were telling this documentary, we made the creative choice not to censor some of the disgusting mm. speech that was thrown at him, his family, and his friends. Um, 
But that was really important to us. We also wanted to showcase the fact that he was a catalyst for so much change, including real legislation that moved the queer lifehood in America forward. Mm -hmm. I, I would argue that things like gay marriage were directly a result of what happened to Matthew years prior. And so we wanted to say that, yes, it does get better. Um, that is such an aptly named organization. Mm -hmm. It does get better. But as good as it gets, we still have so much work to do. Mm -hmm. And this documentary showcases that as well, because if we ever become complacent, we're in danger of there being many more Matthews out there. And there still are new Matthews happening on the streets of this country every single year. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would love to ask you a little bit about the inclusion of Romaine Patterson and Jim Osborne, who were close with Matthew and were his friends and were also queer people. I imagine that was key to kind of getting this piece off the ground. It meant so much to us that people that knew Matthew personally and loved him dearly wanted to share their point of view on his story and not just what happened to Matthew, but also how that became a cause that they took on after his passing. Yeah. When they tell the story about protesters that were happening at Matthew's funeral, um, God, I get so moved because no family should ever have to see that kind of hate spewed after having lost their son. Mm -hmm. And what they did so beautifully of organizing people from all different walks of the community to walk out dressed as angels with giant white wings to block his family from ever having to see the protesters on the other side of the street. Right. That story alone, like it gives me a renewed faith in humanity. Yes. Um, and that came to us via his friends and family. And, and what's so amazing about, you know, including both Jim and Romaine is it didn't just stop there, you know, between Rosie O'Donnell, Andrew yeah. Reynolds, Adam Lampert, these incredible queer activists who wanted to lend their voice or Eric Marcus, the, his oh, God. And who, whose podcast I listen to on the regular to yeah. see him give us that historical context, it really creates a full picture. And mm -hmm. why I think this entire two hour documentary from Soup to Nuts, it, it, it really will help a whole new generation understand Matthew's story and be moved by it just the way I was. Right, I think that's important. You know, there, it's we tend to lose uh, sight of recent history, I think, I mean, you know, there's a whole generations that really don't understand what it means to have grown up in a time of HIV AIDS. And I think too, uh, the Matthew Shepard's story and of course, Brandon Tina's around that same time are so valuable. Uh, would you talk about introducing this story to new generations of people? One of the driving reasons we did this documentary was to bring Matthew's story to a new generation 25 years later. I think that the beauty of what has happened in LGBTQ community over the last 20, 30 years is such rapid change and progression. It's amazing what the experience of a queer youth today versus a queer youth when Matthew was a teenager, it, it's night and day. That said, mm -hmm. no matter how much progress we make, we can't become complacent. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the sacrifices people made before us will make us that much better at continuing the fight. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the the world Matthew was in and how the kind of ease with which people used the F word about gay people or um, that there hadn't been a better, richer understanding about the queer experience, it made it easier for that hate to fester and turn into the violence that happened against him. I think similarly, 25 years later, when you see legislation or protests, or people who take to social media in a way that might help them gain their own following by tearing other people down, it's creating that same environment where we're doomed to repeat our past. You can watch The Advocate Channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Tracy Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.